Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to make the easy basket weave dishcloth. For this project, I'm going to be using Peaches and Cream Original. This is a worsted weight or a number four, 100% cotton yarn. And I'm also going to be using a crochet hook size H or eight or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle as well as a pair of sharp scissors handy. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And give it a nice tight pull. And we are going to chain 27 chains. After finishing our chain of 27, we are going to start by working a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three. And for the double crochet, we wrap the hook, insert the stitch, pull up a loop. We have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again slowly. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And for those of you who've never used cotton yarn before, it does tend to be slightly stiffer than acrylic and wool yarns, but you do get used to it after a while. And I believe the first the first row here is probably going to be the most challenging as we work in the chain. But once we finish this, I think it will get a little bit easier for you. So go ahead and work one double crochet in each chain across. You should have a total of 25 double crochets plus the chain two once you finish this row. This is what you should have at the end of row one. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to begin row two with chain two, one, two, and we are going to start actually in the second stitch from the edge. We're not going to work in the first stitch. And what we're going to do is we are going to work a front post double crochet. And this is the way you do this. It's very similar to a double crochet. The only difference is where you put the stitch. Normally we would work in through the top loops, but with the front post and back post double crochets, we're going to do it a little differently. So we wrap the hook and we're going to actually wrap the hook around the body of the stitch like you're giving it a belt. And then we're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let me show you how that looks. It's just wrapping the stitch around the stitch below on row one. And we're going to do that again. Wrap the hook, your hook goes around the stitch, Pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's two. We're going to do one more. Yarn over, hook goes around that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have three front post double crochets. Now we're going to do three back post double crochets. Very similar except for one difference. We wrap the hook, we come in the back door, go around the stitch, and back out the back door. So we're actually making the stitch behind. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Wrap the hook, come in the back door, around the front and out the back door again. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. It's as simple as that. Yarn over, do that again around the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So, so far we have three front post double crochets and then three back post double crochets. So this basket weave pattern is actually made by alternating that back and forth. And in this case, in multiples of three. So let's do three front post double crochets again. 
I'm going to speed this up just a tiny bit but I have a solution for you. If I start to go too fast at any point in the video, all you need to do is, do is look down here. There's a little gear. It's on this side for the left-hand version. It's um, You hit that little gear, and that will bring up a playback speed, and you can decide to choose a slower playback speed should you wish, or even a faster one if you want to have some fun with this. So I hope that helps you. If you're watching from a cell phone, there's there are three vertical dots in this upper right-hand corner. It's going to be over here for the left-hand version, and it does the same thing. It will bring back a playback speed menu for you to select from. Okay, so now we've worked three front post double crochets. Now we're going to go work three back post double crochets again. Just like we worked the last three coming in the back door or from behind. Okay, let's stop and see what we have. So this is what we're going to do all the way across. I will work this row with you, but we're going to work three front post double crochets followed by three back post double crochets. So let's do that again. Three front post double crochets. And then three back post double crochets. Two and three. And we've got to do that one more time. Three front post double crochets. And then three back post double crochets. When you get to the chain, the turning chain, we're going to work a half double crochet, which is wrap the hook, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. And this is the way your row should look. Okay, now we're ready for row number three. We're going to turn. And this is a nice pattern. It, it is actually reversible. So we're going to chain two. We're not going to work in that half double crochet, but we are going to work three front post double crochets. And when we're working this row, we just pretty much follow what's already there. So we have three, what looks like front post double crochets. So we work front post double crochets. And then now we're going to work three back post double crochets. And we're going to do that again. Three front post double crochets. And then three, I'll finish the third one. And then three back post double crochets. One, whoops, let's make sure we go through all of the strands. There we go. Sometimes working with cotton, the yarn can get a little bit splitty. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, so just be careful to make sure that you pull through all of the fibers. Okay, so let's look at what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you how to finish this row. Three, work three front post double crochets and then three more back post double crochets. Remember coming in the back door for those. If it's faced against you like these are in back, in back you just make front, back post double crochets. And then front three front post and then three back post. Do that much and then I'll show you the last stitch. For the last stitch we work it the same way we did for row number two, we work a half double crochet, just worked in that open space there created by that chain two, turning chain, yarn over, pull through all three loops on that hook, and we turn, and let's take a look at what we have. 
Now for row number four, we're actually going to reverse the direction of the post stitches. And this is where we really get the basket weave effect. We're going to chain two. Now we have front post here facing outward towards us. We're actually going to work back post double crochets. And again, we're skipping this first stitch. We're going to work back post double crochets over the first three stitches. One, two, three, like that. And where you would have had back post stitches, we're going to work front post over these next three stitches. One, two, three. Let's pause and take a look. You can already see the woven effect. Okay, let's do that again. If we see the front post facing out towards us, we're going to do back post. This is just a, a row that we're going to work every three rows to reverse the direction. So three back post, double crochet, after we do that we're going to work three front post, double crochet, make sure we get it through all the strands, one, two, three. So go ahead and work that all the way across, working back post over the stitches when they are facing out closer to you, and then work three front post stitches over the stitches that look like back post stitches. So after working that all the way across the row, go ahead and work a half double crochet, worked right into that chain two turning chain. And as you look at the um, project, make sure that these are alternating back then front. Three back post double crochet, three front post double crochet, back, front, back, front. Okay, now we're going to turn to work row five, chain two. Now for row five and row six, they work the same way. So go ahead and work what I'm about to show you for the next two rows. So you see the stitches are in the back or back away from you. So we're going to do three. We're just going to crochet what we see. We're going to do three back post double crochets. And then three front post double crochets. And one more time just for clarity, three back post double crochets, followed up with three front post double crochets. You can see even better now how this is making this look more woven. So go ahead and finish that across the row. And as you end, work a half double crochet in that turning chain and then repeat this row one more time so that you'll have two rows worked just the way I showed you. This is what you should have at the end of six rows. And in case you need some help, I wanted to show you how you can count these rows. It's easier if you could feel them with the nerve endings in your fingers. So one, two, three, and then four, five, and six. And when we work this basket weave pattern, it's going to be in sets of three rows. We're doing sets of three stitches as we go across, but we also are doing it in groups of three rows. So let's go ahead after six rows, we're going to turn, and again, we're going to chain two. One, two. Now that we have three rows, one, two, three, 
that are the same, and you can count them here too, one, two, three, it is time to reverse the direction. So we have back post double crochets here. So now we're going to reverse that and go with three front post double crochets again. So we're going to work three front post double crochets. And with the posts that are facing towards us, we're going to work three back post double crochets. One, Oop, that one got away from me. Let's try that one again. And that's two. And the third one. Okay, so we're reversing it. I'll do that with you one more time as we go across. One. Two. Three. And then three back post double crochets. One, two, and three. So you can see how this pattern is working. So go ahead and finish this row. And just like all the other rows, we end with a half double crochet worked in that chain two turning chain. Okay, now we're going to turn and we're going to chain two, one, two. And the next two rows are going to be the same. We're going to work just what we see. We're going to work three front post double crochets. And then we're going to follow that with three back post double crochets. One, two, and three. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Three front post, three back post, three front post. These are all double crochets. Three back post three front post and with three back post and a half double crochet worked in that turning chain. So go ahead and do um, this row and then one more row just like this. This is what you should have at the end of the last two rows. Now I have a short assignment for you. After you complete these two rows, you're going to need to go back to row four and work rows four. Now these are the rows that begin with back post double crochets work rows three, four, I'm sorry, four, five, and six. And then you're going to work rows seven, eight, and nine. Row seven is the row that starts with the front post double crochet. So again, repeat rows four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And it should be a little time mark right across the bottom of the screen should you need additional stitch support. So you can just follow along with me again um, from rows four, through nine. Okay, this is what you should have after you complete all of the basket weave rows. Now we're ready to work the border. This is an optional border. I mean, you can end the project here, but I think going ahead and giving it a single crochet border is going to unify the stitches and make them look a lot nicer. And it might actually help the dishcloth a bit to last a little bit longer. So we're going to go ahead and chain one and we're going to turn to work along the row edges. Okay, I'm going to work this entirely with you. I'm going to work single crochet. It's a little tricky to pull through. And that first half of that double crochet, and then another. And then I'm going to work one in the next space. And then I'm going to work two in the next, the next row end. And then I'm going to work one in the next and I'm going to continue that all the way along two single crochets in the next row end and then one single crochet in the next row end. And for those of you who've never seen a single crochet before I'm going to go ahead and slow this one down just a bit. Insert your hook, 
pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Okay, so two in that row end, and then one. Let's do two in this, and then one. And we're just going to complete this all the way across. Sometimes this cotton can get a little stiff on you. And then one. And two. And then one. And then we're going to do two at the very end. We're going to chain two. And then we're going to work, I, I could work the first single crochet in this hole here, but I'm actually going to work it in the spot right here, which is the first chain that we started with, or near the slip knot. And then I'm going to work one stitch in each chain, and it's the opposite. You can see the, the stitch here. We'll just go ahead and stick your hook where that stitch was, and we're just going to crochet over the two strands. Now I'm also doing something else at the same time. This was the extra strand that was left from the beginning and I am going to just crochet over that as well. So I'm crocheting over the two parts or two strands from that foundation chain and the extra chain. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep me from having to hide that at the end and it's going to be very well hidden um, securely under these uh, single crochets. So we're just going to work this all the way across the bottom. I normally don't work all the way across the row to lull you all to sleep, but since this is a beginning project, I, I just want to show you exactly where this hook is going so that you have all the confidence you need. Um, some people may actually think I'm crazy to be introducing basket weave um, to beginners but honestly, I think it's just as easy as working double crochets in the tops of double crochets and have have actually taught this to um, children who've had learning disabilities and they were able to learn the basket weave and talk about a confidence boost um, for a child that's been told that they can't learn things. Boy, that's it's it's just it was really rewarding for me. I just just tell that story to you to encourage you. Um, it was really encouraging to me that this one particular child was able to to master this this stitch as as an early beginner and she was a young teen at the time and was able to go on to win um, county fair ribbons with her work using this stitch so that's why I don't hesitate to introduce fun stitches to beginners because there's no reason why you have to stay stuck with boring crochet for years on end <laughs> It's good to reach out and just just take a chance and and making mistakes is fine just wanted to encourage you with that while I'm crocheting across the bottom here so this is what you should have across the bottom and let me go ahead and show you this side see how much better let me just show you real quickly how much better that looks along the edge as opposed to this if you just left that unworked so now we're ready to turn and we're going to chain two for the corner and go ahead and we could work here for that first stitch to help form the corner but I'm going to have you just work over here in the the um, beginning of this first row end go ahead and work two stitches there and then one stitch in the next row end and then you can work two in this row end and then one and then two, and then one, and two. And we're going to just continue that all the way, all the way across. So that should give us the same number of stitches on both sides of this. One, and then two. And then we're going to end with one. And we have one more. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to work um, 
the last two put one here and then one right here at the top let's stop and take a look at what we have okay now we're going to work the last row across the top which was the first was actually the last row of basket weave that we worked chain two and then we're going to work right in the tops of the stitches and you already know how to do that so go ahead and work those single crochets across the tops and I will meet you at the other corner after working that all the way across go ahead and work an extra stitch in that first stitch that was worked now at this point there are two options to finishing this if you don't want a loop in which to hang this on a hook perhaps around your kitchen you can just chain two and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch and thereby ending the project and to end that project you just give it a chain give it a tug clip the yarn and pull this on through but I'm going to show you another option that I actually prefer for these dishcloths especially you know to be able to hang them up in a secure location so that they can dry go ahead and chain 10 Now, if you want the loop to be smaller, you can use a smaller number, but I've gone ahead and chained 10 and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and pull it on through kind of tightly. Give it a chain and a tug and go ahead and cut a generous strand so that it's easy to hide and give it a pull. And now we have a, a loop so that you can hang this out to dry. So let's go ahead and hide this loose strand since we only have one because we crocheted over the other one. But if you didn't crochet over the other one, you can just hide that other strand in the same way. We thread our yarn into the hook. And this is actually the front side of this stitch. So we're going to say this is the front side and this is the back side. So we're going to hide our strand on the back side of the stitch so let's go ahead and go down into the into the single crochet and the goal of this is just to hide the stitch okay it's being a little stubborn on me all right so I'm going to pull that down and I'm going to make this easy I'm just going to run this under the group of stitches right here Let's go ahead and pull that and give it a little tug back and that's plenty of stitches to hide it under and give it a nice cut and you want to make sure you don't cut your stitches but now we are done with our dishcloth okay there you have the easy basket weave dishcloth with a little loop hope you enjoyed this project if you did please hit that thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing to my channel it's free and if you hit that notification bell um, you will be notified of all the new uploads that I put up there on the channel for you God bless bye bye